need to do that. So that would go under the elective in that, uh, from that elective list. If you want that fine art for all four years, your child is really into art, and we've got a lot of kids that are really into art. Um, they did a wonderful thing in, in focus on our art program. Talk, interviewed a couple of our students. That, I think it came out on Friday. Um, the, the district emailed out and, um, and put it in, uh, published. It was just a couple of our students that really talked about how much they enjoyed the creativity and the opportunity to uh, to stay, get away from the academics for a brief period of time. And um, and so to us, that's that's something that's very important um, to give kids that opportunity to do. And so. Um, you can see that that's down there at the bottom. Uh, personal finance and PD2, those have to be taken at some point. You can take them in the 10th grade, you can take them in the 11th grade. We slotted there in the 12th grade because, as you see, we're trying to get the world languages and the fine art stuff taken before you get to the 12th grade. So that's something that can be done at another point in time. Okay, uh, how to decide. And this, is, and this is why I said the teacher recommendation was just one factor in it. And so what we like to look at is the teacher recommendation. We like to look at the standardized test results. We've got lots of kids, and you have kids, that are incredibly high achieving. And so when we get their test scores, they are incredibly high achieving. The uh, Edmondson, Scales, and Lipscomb have done a magnificent job. Brentwood Middle has done a magnificent job of preparing them academically. But you look at some other things. Um, ability to meet deadlines. How many kids procrastinate? How many kids have bad study habits? The kids that we get are incredibly talented. They may not also always be the most motivated of children. They may not be um, have the best study skills or the best study habits, or they may be overbooked in their schedule. And we get that a lot. Is we want kids to have wonderful experiences, and they get signed up for this activity, and they get signed up for that activity, and they get signed up for that activity. You say, well, when are we going to study? You know, there is no time for that. And that's what's one of the reasons for the study hall is to try to create that time because we want kids to have those other experiences. We want kids to have all those activities because we think those activities are very meaningful in their, in their maturation. Um, so we look at standardized test results because the kid may be, and, and we have this happen quite regularly, a student will make a B in an honors class and the student and the parent will come to me and say, we want him to drop to uh, the standard class so he can make an A. And I say, well, you know he's going to make a B in the standard class also, or she's going to make a B in the standard class also. And they say, well, well, why is that if the class is easier? I say, because he's only going to do so much work to get a B. And if you think about some of your children, they know exactly where those numbers are. Some of them say, I'm going to do just enough to make a C. Some say, I'm going to do just enough to make a B. Some say, I'm going to do just enough to make an A. And they're going to make that same grade no matter what level of class we put them in. Because that's the grade they're after. It may be that that's what they want personally. It may be that's enough to satisfy their parents. And it may be that that's just you know, the motivation that they have. Is that's what they're going to make. So we look at standardized test scores. We have kids that are making 30s on their ACTs that say, I just want to take a standard class. And they're making 30s. They've got all the achievement level, all the capabilities in the world, but they're choosing a lesser path because they don't want to be challenged. Now, our goal is to challenge them each and every time. It doesn't have to be in every course. And I'll give you a doubt. I tell you, both my kids went to school here. And my son was great about it. And so his senior year, uh, let me see if he took uh, dual enrollment English through Columbia State, difficult class, getting college credit for it. 
uh, AP Psychology, getting college credit for it, um, Honors Calculus, um, and then he decided, uh, what was he taking? He took weights and kinesiology, uh, took a weights class. Um, he took um, uh, he took government and economics honors. Not going to challenge himself. He just didn't want to take the AP class. And, and when we talked about it, he sat down. He said, "I play football and I play baseball." He was on our t on school teams. He said, "I need ha to have time to have a life." And I said, "Great." So we figured out a way to challenge him in some academic classes. And also to have him time where he had time to breathe. And so when he left after four years, he came, it was a good, positive experience for him. You know, made good grades, got some good money to go to college, helped, helped his parents off by, you know, getting some of that scholarship money to be able to do that, which we were very grateful on. And, but yet, he still had a healthy experience and had it, um, a healthy time doing it. So when we look at those, how do you decide what to do? Those are all things that factor in. You know, we I know we've got uh, kids that take dance lessons that are at the dance studio two hours a day, five days a week. Okay, when are you going to study? Well, they may not be able to take as hard a load. And so those are things that as parents, you know, we're responsible for thinking about those things. And as I said with my own child, well, you're smart enough to do AP government and economics. Why aren't you taking it? If he, it's not that he's not smart enough to do it. He had a better sense of what his day would look like, what the 24 hours in a day look like, and what the seven days in the week look like. And so that's what we ask you to do, is try to keep that in mind. Um, and you'll get some recommendations from teachers that'll be AP in everything, because the kid's incredibly bright. Yes, they're capable of doing any of those but they may not be able to, capable of doing them all at the same time. And so that's just something that we think about. The extracurricular activities, organizational skills, goals and motivation, and ability to meet deadlines, all things that need to be considered as they go through uh, uh, selecting these courses. Uh, Skyward registration, um, that video, It is recommended that you use a computer to complete your course requests. Course requests are not available in the Skyward mobile app. To begin selecting courses, students will log into their Skyward student access accounts. Course requests cannot be made using a parent family access account. Once you are logged in, choose Schedule from the left-hand menu. Next, locate Course Requests Now Open on the right hand side and choose the link for request courses. You will now be on the course requests page. On the left side you will see available courses and on the right side you will see selected courses. You will also see a search box at the bottom of the page. Use the search box to locate a course. For example, enter ENG into the search box to see all of the English courses that are available. Once you locate the course that you need, select that course by clicking on it, then choose the Add Course button located between the two columns. Your chosen course will now be listed in the Selected Courses area. Please note that the F and S that you will see beside the course names stand for Fall and Spring. For year-long courses, Make sure that both classes are showing in the selected courses box. If you accidentally add a course you don't want, highlight it in the selected courses column and choose remove course. Continue this process until all courses appear in the selected courses column. If your school has enabled course alternate requests, you can utilize that feature by choosing the link for View Alternates near the top of the page. Verify that the number of scheduled courses and credits meet the guidelines provided by your administrator. Here is a cheat sheet that should help you find some of your courses. You can typically search for the first two or three letters of a course to find what you are looking for. Uh, understanding the GPA 
Okay, this is incredibly important um, for two reasons. The first reason is uh, the Hope Scholarship, which is 4000 a year, 4500 for the first two years. They get $4,500 a year if they have a 3.0 GPA um, or a 21 on their ACP. 90% of our students make the 21 on their ACT. So they're automatically eligible for the Hope Scholarship. So 90% of them are already going to walk in. Um, probably 70% of them get to really make, would make it 21 on their uh, ACT right now or in the middle. You know, so that's just something that we know. Because we keep saying they're going to be academically prepared. Um, so when you look at the scale, the scale changed this year. So the state of Tennessee changed the scale. It used to be that uh, 93 to 100 was an A, and now it's 90 to 100. And so the question, you know, when I said before about what that, what's that child going to make? So we've gone through, uh, since I've been in Williamson County Schools, this is my 34th year in Williamson County Schools, we've gone through five different uh, grading scales. We've gone through five different grading scales. We went from a 94 was an A, we went to a 91 was an A. And we asked the kids, what, what, is there going to be any change to what you do to go from a 94 to a 91? And they said, nope, whatever we had to do to make a 94, that's exactly what we're going to do to make a 91. It's that same kid that says an A is an A. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make that value. So that same kid that was working to make a 91 is going to do the same work to make a 90. They're just looking at it. I got to make an A. And so it doesn't matter if you make a 91 all the way up to 100. We encourage them to make 100, but the one great thing about that is there are so many kids that we have that are perfectionists and they drive themselves crazy trying to get every last point. And it's not healthy for them and it's not healthy for us to bicker over a point, whether they make a 97.8 or a 96.8. It's still an A. And so that's something that we do to try to get the, the point across to the kids. Uh, so that's our grading scale. As you see to the right, um, regular classes are on a 4.0 grading scale. Uh, so 4, 3, 2, 1 for A, B, C, and a D. We do an extra 0.5 points for a child to take an honors class. So when the kids set, you're going to make a B anyway, whether you took an honors class or a standard class. But if you take the honors class and you make a B, you get an additional 0.5 on your GPA. And so, and what the reason we do that is we want to encourage kids to take more challenging classes. We want them to try to become a better student. Uh, advanced placement classes, we give them an additional quality point. So uh, a student that has uh, makes an A in an AP class will have a, a GPA of five. And the reason this is so important, um, when you're doing your GPAs, um, freshman is so important to get off to a good start. If you do not get off to a good start, you have the biggest hole to try to dig out of. And so it's incredibly important that they get off to a fast start. Students that get off to a fast start, by the time you get to your senior year, your GPA is only going to change by a tenth, two tenths. It's not going to change much because you've already taken the majority of your classes. You've been taking six classes a year, that's 18 credits you've already accomplished. You're 75% of the way through it. So your GPA is 75% set before you even enter the 12th grade. So when kids make, it's that first year that is the most important in setting that standard for what they're going to have GPA. If a kid gets off to a terrible start, is it the end of the world? No, but it is a big hole to dig out of. So we really want to make sure that kids are getting off to a fast start. Um, the GPA values, uh, so what's the impact? As I said, um, in the standard class, they get 4.0 for an A, and uh, for an honors class, they would get a 4.5. So if the student makes uh, three A's and three B's in standard classes, they're going to have a 3.5 GPA. 
And if they make three A's and three B's in, honor, in honors classes, they're going to have a four point GPA. And we don't rank students here, so the difference between a 4.0 and a 3.5 for graduation status for us is not the end of the world. But college admissions, one of the questions you have to put on there is what is your GPA? So your 4.0 GPA is going to be different than some of these 3.5 GPAs. And so that is a common thing is we're not going to put the class rank, but we are going to put that with your GPA. And, you know, it, it's trying to select schools and it is more selective for each school that our uh, children apply to. Uh, honors courses, get a little shine on the other side. Uh, okay, so uh, in addition to the additional uh, quality points, um, you get three additional points. For honors classes, you get three points added to the quarter. So let's say you were making an 89. Um, that's what the grade averaged out to. You get three additional points. It'll show up as a 92 on your report card. And so that's for each of the, again, that's an incentive for kids to take a more challenging class. So that's why we give them the extra three points. Um, it's added at the end of each nine weeks. So at the end of the first quarter, it goes from an 87 to a 90. It goes from a 91 to a 94. It's not going to change the grade level at that point. It can bump them up a, uh, to the next letter grade if it's uh, within three points of that. And so they do that at the end of the first nine weeks, at the end of the second nine weeks, and we also add the three points to their uh, final exam grade. And then those, then those three things are averaged together to get the semester grade. And the semester grade is what is, uh, is what goes on the transcript. The report cards um, that you get for each of nine weeks are just very formal progress reports. That's not used in calculating GPAs until you get to the semester. AP uh, classes, as we said, it goes from a 4.0 GPA to a 5.0 GPA, but you get five additional quality points um, each of the nine weeks. So instead of adding plus three, we'll add plus five. And uh, in ninth grade, we do have the one class of AP Human Geography. Um, and so that's the introduction to uh, the eight advanced placement college level classes for our students when they come to the ninth grade. Um, we recommend that highly. Um, if the teacher recommends it, definitely um, have them take that class. Um, they may go into world history. And then what we try to do is those kids that are in world history, we think AP Human Geography is a great introduction so they can do it as sophomores. So the kids that didn't, weren't recommended for it, um, they may take it as a sophomore. So, um, uh, freshman orientation, July 27th and 28th. Um, that time, if you're out of town, uh, those are the times that we offer it. We'll be able to give you their, the, the key is they get morning or afternoon session. They just come up for a few hours. Books, lockers, they pick up their class schedule. They'll tour the building. They'll get all that, those things ahead of time, be able to find their way around campus. And we do that before the um, upperclassmen come in. Um, as nice as our upperclassmen are, sometimes uh, they may get kids uh, wrong direction, send them to the swimming pool, which we don't have. <laughs> uh, send them to the elevator, which we don't have in this building. We do have it in the STEM building, but not here. So um, we make sure that the kids do feel comfortable working their way around campus uh, during that time period. Uh, contacts. Uh, Jill, if you'll stand up, Jill, this is Jill Wood. She is our freshman counselor. Uh, Donna Smith, she is our freshman principal. Um, they will be your point of contact um, and working with your child for all four years. Um, when you do set up your 15 minute sessions, some of you will be meeting with Jill and some of you will be meeting with our other guidance counselors. All five of our guidance counselors go over to Brentwood Middle or to the STEM building. Um, and so we can get to meet with every parent within um, four days. So that's why we'll have all. So you may not be meeting with Jill the very first time, but they're all uh, very good uh, in providing that uh, recommendation and, the, and guidance uh, for success with that freshman. And then again, I'm Kevin Kydell. It's uh, been my pleasure uh, to talk to you tonight.
Um, we're going to hang around. Uh, we'll do questions as a general thing. I'll answer any questions that you have. But if you have questions that are just specific for your child, um, Dr. Smith will be hanging out here. Uh, Ms. Wood will be here. Uh, Ms. Pratt and Ms. Moody will be here. They can answer questions about fine arts. Again, uh, you have the flyer for the uh, uh, for the musical. We would love to have you come to that. Uh, does anybody have any questions that they think everybody would like to answer? Does anybody have any questions they want everybody to hear? Yes. Okay, the question. Do we have early dismissal? We do not have early dismissal. And so our students are here until 247, unless they're in the uh, uh, early the entrepreneur center over at the uh, district office and they take their online class. Everybody else is here from site 40 to 247. Best day of the week. The late start? That is the uh, late start. I thought this was correct. <laughs> you should have uh, had here something in the next month or two. The question was, will we have late start next year? That's up to the school board. Um, we had uh, the two hour late start the other day, last Thursday. Kids said that was the best thing ever. As long as we get out at 247. They had no desire to stay past 247. So when we always talk about, wouldn't it be great to start later? Yes, it would, as long as we get out at the exact same time. So when we talk about those late starts, it's not as easy or They like half of it, they don't like the other half. So that's something that is uh, being debated. Uh, questions for everybody? Yes? Can you take an AP class and not sit for the exam? Yes. The question was, can you take an AP class and not sit for the exam? You most certainly can do that. And we, in fact, you can, uh, we've had students that we don't offer every AP, we offer most AP classes, um, but we don't offer, uh, we offer uh, macroeconomics, not microeconomics. And so we have students that actually study for it on their own and take the test on their own um, through us. But it is, so you don't, have, as long as you're enrolled in the class, we recommend that you take it because you've worked that hard and you're prepared to take it, but you don't have to take it. If you don't take it, the, um, you don't get the quality point the second semester. So instead of it being a 5.0 class, it becomes a 4.5 class. It's treated as an honors class as far as the GPA goes. So then your AD exam doesn't calculate your results? No, the AD exam, um, what happens is, uh, so students, if advanced placement classes are, are college level classes, and you have to make a three, four, or five to be eligible for college credit, and that depends on the university. There are some schools that don't offer any credit for a certain levels of classes. Uh, so for instance, um, to get a physics credit, if you're an engineering student, you have to take physics C. And we offer uh, physics one and physics two. Most colleges say you can do that as a science credit, but we're not going to give you that as your physics credit. So they don't even accept it, with, even if you made a five on So each individual college will determine if they're going to get credit uh, for each course. And so what we do is we have students at the end of the year, we prepare them to take the exam, they'll take the exam, and then they'll get their score back. But that's, and so for our final exam, we exempt them from taking our final exam. They don't, so what we do is we average their grade from the third nine weeks and their grade from the fourth nine weeks. That's their semester average. We don't give them a final exam. That was the AP exam. And whatever, we don't get the results back until August. So we wouldn't know it, or actually we get the results back in July. We wouldn't have those grades to be able to put them on the, on the grade to calculate. Other questions for everybody? Yes. Can they take the lifetime wellness online to free up space in their schedule? Yes, they can take lifetime wellness online to, to free up space in their schedule. And so, uh, and we have the online wellness class, one of our teachers teaches. And so, uh, it's well done. That is, that is a possibility to free up the time. Yes, Mary. Oh, great question. Um, does a sport, well, one of the things that we showed up there was you have to take lifetime wellness as one full credit. You take it for a year, and then you have to have another 0.5 credit of physical education. And if you play a sport, 
or the marching band, cheerleading dance, those count as that 0.5 credit. That 0.5 credit is waived. You don't get a 0.5 credit towards your GPA. It just waives that requirement, which frees up room in your schedule. So if you are in the marching band, you play a sport, dance, cheer, it does count. Does that have to be at the school? Does that have to be at the school? It has to be approved by the district. And so, for instance, uh, lacrosse, rugby, um, uh, swimming that are club sports, they have requested permission and the district approves those. And so, um, if it was dance a question, and so that would be a question of if it's a part of a dance group, we have, it, somebody has to apply to the district and then the district would see how many hours it is, whether the district's gonna approve it or not. Uh, individual dance studios have not been approved in the past. The golf team does count as part of the PE requirements. No, one year, one season. So if you ran cross country as a freshman, that counts as your PE waiver. No, you don't have to do another sport to start it out. Um, we have kids that uh, girls flag football became very popular last uh, spring. A lot of kids knocked out their, uh, their PE credit that way. Bowling was another big one. A lot of kids knocked out their PE credit for being uh, participating on the bowling team. Yes. They take another class. You have to take. You have to be enrolled. You have to take six classes a year, plus the study hall. So you have to be enrolled in six credits. Yes. No, it does not take a period from their day. It's before or after school. The question was, does the sport take a period? We do not offer our sports during the school day. All of our sports are extracurricular. Yes, ma'am. We have a ninth grade team, a separate team, and we have a separate ninth grade team for basketball, and we have a separate ninth grade team for football, and then for baseball, they have two JV teams, depending on if they can play JV1 or JV2. Oh boy, uh, yeah, uh, it depends on the number of kids involved in the team. So if we don't have enough participation for freshman girls, we wouldn't have a separate freshman girls team. They may play JV. Um, we haven't had a freshman girls team in a few years. They, they just lack of participation. We haven't cut anybody. We just haven't had enough kids coming out with the team um, to justify having for to have a freshman team because other schools also don't have it and there's no opponents to play. Other questions? I have one question. So if uh, they're taking lifetime bonus as online accounts, so does it need to be during school hour or can it be outside school hours? You can work on it outside of the school hours. Mm -hmm. The question was, do, do they have to work an online class during the school hours? No, we can put it as, the, as an extra class as part of their day. And they get an extra study hall or take an extra class during that time period. Okay, I appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Smith, Ms. Cook, Ms. Rapp, Ms. Cook, you all for your